I had a friend that you never saw him break a sweat until we were at his funeral. And that was the head of Louis Vuitton, Virgil Abloh. Sometimes it's not that I'm not right. Sometimes I'm just not right now. Kanye here has been a guy that's been very interesting to me because not only is he from Chicago, but there's a period of his life, his career, that he felt like he was God. I could be talking like to one of these like CEOs or something and my lips are moving and they're not hearing anything I say. I could do that because I'm no longer at Universal. I don't work for you no more. When they call you crazy, that's a good thing. You want to be surrounded by a bunch of crazies. Great two cents here by Kanye. <laughs> Many people see Kanye, for the most part, just perform. You don't see him as a man. You might see him as somebody on, on social media posting here and there, but you don't see him in full-length conversation like this. So I appreciate this interview. Even a crazy person can call you crazy. Mark these words of this inter interview. I'm going to run shit. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zipali here. Hey, Lindsay from Dallas, Texas. And once again, we have another reaction video. And listen, my outcome with these reaction videos is because our channel is dedicated to help you think like a millionaire, strategize like a millionaire, so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire. And by the way, some of you guys thinking, well, psh, millionaire has never been in my life. Well, listen, if you want to go out and live your life financially free, if you want to go out and be debt free, if you want to be a right of student loans, credit card debt, uh, consumer debt, car loan debt, credit card debt, whatever, whatever debt, and you want to live in the best neighborhoods, you put your kids in best schools, you want to travel the world, you want to save money for retirement and plan ahead and for, for emergencies, well, guess what? Financially speaking, you'll need based on inflation and rising interest rates. It is no longer going to be a luxury to be a millionaire. You're going to have to be a millionaire if you want to have freedom and latitude in your life. And so instead of just looking like a millionaire, we want you to actually become a millionaire. And, and how do you find out those strategies well a lot of those strategies are based on what people are doing right now finding people that are already successful have achieved some form of financial prosperity and abundance and success and finding out what the do's and the don'ts of their life that's what this youtube channel is dedicated to and why these reaction videos have i think resonated with many of you i see many responses here just from the comments alone of how you guys respond to a lens of entrepreneurship a lens of personal finance a lens of just being in a position of being faith-based and looking at successful people that are in hollywood that are celebrities that are entertainers that are athletes and the lessons we can learn from them and things to do and not to do and this episode has kanye west and so Kanye from Chi-Town, baby, I'm from Chi-Town. Kanye here has been a guy that's been very interesting to me because not only is he from Chicago, but there's a period of his life, his career, that he felt like he was God, that he felt like he was a master of the world, that he was literally the person that's ruling his universe, and rightfully so. To see a guy like Kanye here talk about his rise, the things that he goes with. And if anybody's been following Kanye on Instagram or on social media the last couple of weeks, it's kind of been like all over the place. And obviously he calls out people, he puts his business out there and kind of lets people know, I mean, he's a celebrity when much is given, much is expected. And and uh, just because you follow Christ, just because you follow God, doesn't mean your life is perfect. And uh, I'm also learning it from, from Kanye's footsteps too as well, because you know eventually I'm gonna get to the level of financial goals and milestones that I'm gonna hit where level of new enemies start to appear. And so I wanna be prepared for it too as well. So let's take a look here at what Kanye has to say on this interview with this yoga company called Alo. Let's take a look at what Kanye here has to say about his career, success, finance. Um, and Tim also says that he talks about wealth and power and building schools and honoring his mother. Let's take a look. English, you know, the idea of having to speak correct, correct English, like you're not going to respect what I'm saying, even though you know what I'm saying, unless I'm speaking correct English. Well, that's like a version of every time I'm talking, I'm getting pulled over and having to do a, uh, a alcohol test, walking down a yellow line with my uh, finger on my nose. And while I want to express myself and I've seen like kids express themselves and they just want to cry. And someone will say, use your words. Right. But what if they want to cry? Mm -hmm. Because we were given that form of expression and people hold that in. Hold that. I had a friend that you never saw him break a sweat until we were at his funeral. Wow. Wow. And that was the head of Louis Vuitton, Virgil Abloh. We never saw him break a sweat until we were at his funeral. By the way, how many of you are like that? I know I'm like that. Uh, perhaps it's called a level of stoicism. 
You know, uh, Patrick had us read a book one time talking about Stoicism, how to think like an emperor. Uh, I think that was the name of the book, how to think like an emperor. I might be wrong about that, but it talked about Stoicism, how to look at things from a 35,000 foot view, not to react right away, not to be emotional about things right away, because sometimes we make bad decisions when we are highly emotional because we're less logical. But uh, do, you em do you embark upon that journey when you are detaching away from reality for a second because you agree or don't agree with something in a level of stoicism, which I think is a pretty important level of philosophy in terms of just going about being yourself. Because sometimes people express themselves right away. You already can tell well, how their feelings are on their sleeve and then where their emotions are on the sleeve, their faith is on their sleeve, however they are. Honestly, they're, they're going to let you know about their business. But sometimes people who are a little bit more reserved, a little bit more stoic, good, bad, a little bit more stoic, it's uh, served me right over the last, you know, five, seven years, where, whereas before, I was a little bit more emotional. So how do you go about expressing yourself? Uh, I'm, I'm more of a guy that shuts up and kind of deals with it and processes things. And if I need to express something, I'll let you know. But I'm not the one that's going to knee-jerk react right away to some form of emotion or some type of verbal response. Wow. So people down expression. And I'm saying be expressive. I'm showing let's be expressive. Now we talk about language. What I did realize is it's sometimes it's not that I'm not right. Wait for it. Watch it. I got a good one. Here we go. Sometimes I'm just not right now. <laughs> when I'm watching Kanye talk, I'm just thinking about how Jimmy Fox has impersonated him over the years, and this kind of just goes right into that impersonation, man. But uh, by the way, Jimmy Fox, if there's one guy there that's been blessed with an overabundance of talent, it's that guy. And sometimes he impersonates people better than they actually act themselves, being their own their own selves. It's not right now. It's not that's that right. you're not right. It's just not right now. Mm -hmm. So they'll you're be too ahead of us. Okay? <laughs> you're too ahead of us. And I have to like be. That's the genius of Kanye. Here, because that's not a good thing to be too ahead because what do you do then? You lose the audience. Yeah. Okay, let me make this point clear. I hate the word point. Let me make this idea clear. Let's make this idea clear. Remove the word me. That's a style of language that I've been practicing and learning where we're just taking out all those years and years of classism because that all that stuff that's in a dictionary is a I'm better than you. I'm smarter than you. And when we get to what we absolutely need, if we need to use words, it gets to like Yoda level. By the way, what a, what a phenomenal way about going things. I was having lunch with somebody one time and he's a, he was a staunch, you know, conservative, very staunch conservative. Because for me, I'm, I'm educating myself on how I should apply my vote here come November 8th. And I want to make sure that I'm smart with my decision in terms of who I vote for to, to be in office because obviously politicians make policies that affect us all. And I want to make sure I'm making the right decision that my contribution to America is with a smart vote, uh, which I encourage you, by the way, I encourage you to make sure that uh, come November 8th, these mid-year elections, you, you use your vote because people die in different countries to try to get the opportunity to vote and don't squander while you're here in this country. So in, in, in Kanye's situation here, um, there's many times in your life where you're, you're asking yourself, how do I get to the next level? And it's refreshing to see a Kanye constantly finding ways to recreate himself. And back to my conversation with this conservative, uh, this uh, uh, chief of staff uh, for, for a certain politician here in, in Texas, he said, I stopped using the word middle class because the word middle class is a Marxist terminology, a so socialism type of terminology. It's better you say these group of people are middle income versus saying they're middle class because classifying people into different boxes. And that's what that life is all about in terms of putting people into boxes. You, you know, people are free to drift into any box. It's who are we to classify and box people in just so therefore we can point at different directions and know that they're there in those boxes. So really respect what Kanye is doing here in terms of understanding how powerful language is in terms of your relationship with yourself and relationship with other people. Like the word try. Okay, here's a success term. Do you use the word try? Like I'm trying to say, like I'm trying to become a millionaire. I'm trying to start something. No, no, no. Are you going to do it? I am doing it. Man, it's done. Don't use the word try because the word try is a word that even your body knows you're lying. Your whole physiology knows it's not confident because you know you're using the word try. Try is a good procrastinator's word. But right now, 
I mean, I'm ripe in that right now, but right now a logo can express and take you, you know, a long way. Um, rapping on a song can take you a long way. Putting graphics on the side of a shirt can express something. These things, these signifiers of who we are and what we're down with. But I definitely envision a world where we don't have to have these signifiers. We don't have to tell people out loud who we voted on. Sure. So when sure. we do... By the way, it's <laughs> not a power right there. How come it's been the last two years, four years, six years, eight years, the last 10 years that we're judging those that we love and care about based on who we voted for or what political class that and policies that we lean towards. What happened to the point where we can be in disagreement about something but yet still love one another? What happened to the point where we can still come into areas of conflict, work things out and still operate and still find ways to mutually benefit one another versus shouting people down and saying, I can't talk to you, I can't talk to this person because of how they vote or who they associate with. Where do we get to that point? I can't talk to you because you're not a Christian. I can't talk to you because you don't go to church. Why are we doing that? Can't talk to you because you don't believe in God. Matter of fact, if all you're doing is hanging around the people that agree with you, you ain't doing your job. If you really believe in your message and you really believe in your movement, guess who you need to really talk to? People don't believe in your message and people don't belong in your movement or people that don't believe in what you're doing. Those are the people you need to talk to. Those are the people you need to convert because the other sides of the spectrum are people that are never going to listen to you Versus the people that already listen to you, the people in the middle, you got to convert because either they're going to never listen to you or they're going to listen to you. You just got to do your job to go out there and convert and do your and, and do your and do your outreach to make sure that people have an opportunity to listen to your voice. Our or our company, and when we do things that are based on schools, because that's the main idea to make the school. We have to educate the critical mass on esteem. Yes. We have to educate the critical mass on religions. Okay, it was Kanye and Breland in school? Know, all the religions. We have to educate the critical mass on breathing, on yoga. We have to educate the critical mass on financial literacy. Yeah, there you go. That's what I'm talking about. We have about. to educate. The, when I even educate, let's say expose information. Create awareness. Because educates even a little bit. Uh, 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 even deeper. Just like that. That's you right. know, like we, we have to educate on physics. How do things actually work? How do you, your How about pipes, relationships? The water. How does that work? <laughs> right? You know, that's so our school is around um, engineering, food. That's the most important. That's the top. We're nomadic. The idea of a home is a concept placed on us. Yeah. Anyway. It's true. But okay, so there's there's so much he's, he said. Okay, let me stop. Let's unpack a couple of things. Number one, he's talking about school systems. Let me ask you a question you have, for those of you watching this. If you have kids, how confident are you right now in the public school system? How confident are you? How confident are you in the narrative that's being exposed right now in our public school system with school boards exposing your children to things that don't necessarily need to be exposed to them at this age? That's right now is is based on some of your values and principles that's inappropriate for what you want your kids to be exposed to. Because, for example, if you had a day and time or even an age for you to have a conversation with your children about birds and the bees, well, guess what, folks? You probably need to have that conversation sooner than later because of what the public school system is doing to the children in our schools. Uh, last week, listen, this is, not, this is not a judgment to anybody in any community, but uh, this male teacher comes... Miss male teacher who teaches shop class comes to school and the school's okay with it because they have to be all inclusive and they have to embrace people. And so this teacher comes to school with prosthetic breasts, with pointy nipples, huge, massive breasts with pointy nipples. And he's teaching his male students about shop class. Now, how distracting is that? How upsetting is that to parents? How upsetting is that to the kids having, having to deal with this type of stuff? That it's already confusing to learn a subject matter to keep yourself safe in shop class without sawing off a finger. But then you got to distract yourself with based on what the teacher is wearing, which, which are prosthetic. They're not even implants. It's not even something that they own. It's actually, they just wore it on top of their chest. So these are some of the things that we have to plan for. If you are confident with the public school system, we'll be confidently ready to have an answer for that. And if you're not confident with the public school system, well, do you have the financial resources to make sure your children have access to private schools 
that are teaching the values and principles that you stand for, that you want your children to learn because you have the freedom to do that too as well, that you don't have to submit yourself to what the public school systems are. By the way, the public school system is funded by public funds, so you got to kind of suck up but suck up, but publicly they have to teach your kids. Whereas private, you can put them in a school system with an agenda, excuse me, and a, cur- and a curriculum that you agree with that are surrounded with teachers that are also with the values and principles that you agree with that are reinforcing that six to seven to eight hours a day while you're away from it at your job, at your business, grinding it out. Or even better yet, have them at home, be homeschooled by a teacher that you hire or by your wife or your husband that teaches the kid, the kids at home to be surrounded with the values principles that you stand for. So where Kanye is going with this, that's that's one part. The other part is financial education. Whereas the only time you and I, most people learn about money and what to do with money is during the bad experiences with money. Because how many of y'all learn about money for the good experiences? I was never exposed to good experiences with money until I was an adult and I got involved in the insurance business and I was exposed to people and families that did well with money that got exposed to that early on in their life not me so when do you want your children to be exposed to financial literacy or at least financial awareness and so what Kanye is doing here with the schools what I gather he's starting a school awesome job look forward to hearing more of it but I bet you gonna need some food (laughs) that's right and I ain't sorry for using incorrect English when saying that because I bet you if you in a spot where you need some food, the last thing you're going to wor- be worried about is, proper is how correct your English yeah, is right. <laughs> about it. So the most important thing is your Self-sustaining. food. The second thing is your sleep. The ability to sleep mm-hmm. is going to expose uh, engineering of food, shelter, clothing, automotive, computer, hardware, and software, financial literacy, and just as a shout out to Elon, rocket science <laughs> for, the, for the kiddos. <laughs> and by the way, this, this is probably no joke. In, in the next what, 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 what do you think will be going to space more frequently? Going to the moon? Shoot, going to Mars. How many years do you think it's going to be before space travel becomes not just a rich per- person thing, but more of a commercial thing? Where to go up to space to get to some destination in another part of the world is going through space to get there sooner and faster through a hypersonic or hyper, what do we call a ship that space shuttle perhaps that gets there sooner, faster and quicker. When do you think that's going to happen? I'm curious. I'm trying to, I, I don't know if I got that whole, I kind of went on like this seven part uh, visual experience. These aren't rants I'm giving you. These are visual experiences, right? I'm painting a picture, a sonic picture. Well, By the way, just just listen to Kanye here. The last what seven or so minutes just gets me uh, such an insight into his brain because his brain is all over the place. And you, people who usually like that are some pretty genius characters, man. They uh, create some things. They think about some things that a lot of people never ever think about, and, and to their credit. So very cool to see this in action because you know, obviously we only see for the most part, m- many people see Kanye for the most part just perform. You don't see him as a man. You might see him as somebody on, on social media posting here and there, but you don't see him in full length conversation like this. So I appreciate this interview. Walk with me here. Uh, so the idea is people shame the concept of mental health. It is the lowest form of discrimination. Why? Because you take anything that someone is discriminated for and that person can discriminate against you and call you crazy. Even a crazy person can call you crazy. By the way, when when you're in the Marine Corps, when they call you crazy, that's a good thing. You want to be surrounded by a bunch of crazies. So, you know, my program when it comes that word crazy, all good to me. It's an interesting, you know, um, weight to carry. It's an interesting tick here and there. It's like, it's like a, um, what people said, some people said that uh, the COVID, COVID shot was the mark of the beast. It's like a mark of the beast on my ego because I could do something crazy in the best way. And it could be like a, you know, literally like a random person on the street and point like from two blocks away and say, that was crazy. And I feel like shit (laughs) 
for a little bit and it hurts as as a human sure. being by the way do you want to know what's crazy what's crazy is my newly released book faith made millionaire is now officially a bestseller thanks to you so i appreciate all of you that have purchased and written a review of faith-based millionaire by the way if you can and you've purchased Faith Made Millionaire, go to Amazon right now. We'll put the link here in the description. Go to Amazon right now. Write your review. I will be randomly selecting five people that place a review on Amazon, randomly selecting five people that write a review, a signed book by myself, and, you know, these shirts here. These shirts, these shirts. Let's check out these shirts. Faith Made Millionaire shirts for anybody that writes a review, randomly selecting and the deadline is the next five days after watching this video. The description will show you the deadline date. We'll share with you the deadline date, but we're going to send you a signed book by myself and a T-shirt from the Seven Fear Squad uh, merch site of Faith Made Millionaire. So that's crazy. Never wrote the book to be a number one bestseller. Never wrote the book to be a bestseller. I wrote the book to educate my clients. I the book, wrote the book to educate my clients that we educate, the associates that we're mentoring in the insurance business. Never thought it'd be on Amazon and be a bestseller. So God bless you. Thank you guys. Appreciate the support because that's crazy to see it be a bestseller. Thank you so much. God bless you. Of course. And it, it, sure. it still like hurts my feelings and it's nothing I could do. And then I started to talk about why well, I made this amount of money to compensate for people downing me or the fact that people can I call it Britney Spears dadding someone I could be talking like to one of these like CEOs or something and they I'm just talking and it's like they just press mute and my lips are moving and they're not hearing anything I say why? and they start why? talking over me the whole reason why, why I went to Gap is every step of the way in my career you know, there was something in the way of my career. So I went to Gap like, okay, this is it. And they did the actual thing. They they did the dream, but just without Steve. They did the dream without Ye. And, but they still want to like do it with that kind of background and all these. And, you know, mark these words of this inter interview. I'm going to run shit. All right. I'm going to run shit. There you right? go. Put it on me. Uh, That's a leader. Oh, here's another. I got a lot of thoughts I thought about in the past two weeks. Another thing is like money. Okay. My topic. Here we go. The ultimate power is position. Not money. It's not money. It's position. Because yeah. someone in between or at a higher position. Can take it with the money. Could, could uh, determine your fate. And they could have way less money. That's right. Yeah, by the way, who's more powerful? Uh, a senator that's making $250,000 a year or a millionaire? Huh? You ever think about that? So in, in your pursuit of becoming a millionaire, guess what you have to do too as well? If you really want to have further control in your life. We all know who's in charge, but do you know how you can have control here on earth to make sure that certain powers that be don't affect your situation? You got to find either place yourself in position as Kanye has mentioned here, that word position, you got which would not you have the financial resources to do so. You got to put yourself in position, or you're going to find yourself in a position that supports somebody in that position. So therefore, you're in the know, you're in the circle. You got to be around certain circles. So finance is going to greatly help you do that. Uh, my observation in networking in Chicago and now in Dallas, I've noticed why certain people just, even though they're broke, they're not making a lot of money. I find certain people in certain circles. And I'm thinking, oh, that's their power move. That's their power move because they're building a network of people in charge of people in position. So therefore, when they do get their money, they have access to people in that position or in certain positions to help whatever agenda that is that they're looking to accomplish. So it's one thing to have money, but it's definitely in my opinion, much more important to eventually have position. Great two cents here by Kanye. So when I made that joke about you work at Universal, I could do that because I'm no longer at Universal. So you're no longer the executive that can talk to me like I'm not me. I don't work for you no more. But I honestly believe that Gap and Adidas are part of a bigger plan to marginalize American companies and American industry, which is the opposite of what Danny's doing. And that's why you see this glow coming from me. Because in this prison of finger pointing 
and name calling, a little, a little crack of light, a little Shawshank Redemption came through <laughs> that prison cell at that factory today. <laughs> And it gave him hope. Very interesting conversation here with Kanye and the way he's thinking. And uh, it's, it's, it's refreshing to see how some of the things I've seen with him and uh, Kim and Kim's uh, uh, boyfriend and the situation there, and that, that baby daddy conflict that he's going through. By the way, I've been through that. It's, 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 it's nothing pretty. And just the, the tension that uh, he's got going on and the pressure that's going, uh, going on in his life with all the different decisions he's making. But uh, I wonder what you guys are thinking about what he said about financial literacy, what he said about power and position versus money, what he said here about schools and agendas that we're succumb to if we just allow our kids to stay in public schools. So when I'm looking at Kanye and when I'm looking at this interview, I'm seeing a lot of change happening. I see a genius at work. And maybe some of us can learn from that in terms of what we need to apply in our life instead of just being part of the same old, same old, being part of the same day, another dollar, I think you have the opportunity right now to create a lot of wealth financially, so therefore you can start operating thinking for yourself and encourage other people to start thinking for themselves. And we're creating a new movement and a new community of people where they're starting to think for themselves and making sure that they're finding ways to also see multiple sides of the store before they make their own individual decision, or in this case, we're just talking about voting, placing that type of vote to vote in office the certain people that affect all of our lives to create policies that improve our lives, not takeaway so that being said i got a couple other videos here for you to watch and uh i'm just curious you agree with me you don't agree with me what are your thoughts please put it in the comment section below and before i let you go make sure you go to faith made millionaire on amazon pick up your copy of faith made millionaire because when you find yourself in a worse position you're actually in the best position and these tools inside this book is going to help you make sure you demolish a lot of myths and misconceptions and you end up not following your fear but more so your faith based on what you want to do and what you want to accomplish in your life life. With that being said, if you watch this video and have you done so already, please consider hitting like. If you watch a couple of our other videos and have you done so either, subscribe to our channel, please do so, and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. That being said, from Dallas, Texas, I'm your Marty Smart Guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and continue to be money smart today.